So this is going to be a kind of like a double whammy because last night I recently got a PB. You know, it was a pretty sizable PB. It was like seven, eight seconds or something. This has been like six years or something, six and a half, something like that. It's been a while since I have PB'd in this category. I am running against 3516 because these are different uh, splits because it is a different route as opposed to what my previous PB was. This does Chameleon third. The other route did Eagle third, which is a way slower route by probably about eight seconds, eight or nine, but it's a lot more consistent at the cost of being more difficult. I'm also going to go over every aspect of the speedrun and why it is so difficult. So, here we go. This is my PB from last night. 3508. Spoilers, if you haven't seen it already. Okay, in the intro stage, you guys have seen this like over and over and over and over and over again. Thousands of times, quite literally. Um, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a level that requires very fast mashing <laughs> and <laughs> placing yourself on a pedestal. It's also fairly RNG heavy because of the end. Uh, these bees can get off the screen. Uh, these bees can kind of affect like how you go about doing the intro stage based on like what they do and how much damage that you take. Contact damage does four. Shooting with a gun does I mean, two, and then shooting with a missile takes three. He's right. And uh, different HPs that you end up taking will determine if you can a do a strat at the end of the level called pass cars. And we're going to do that right here. Although, I don't think I can. The only way you can really do this feasibly is if you have four HP or more. I should have gotten that realistically because it, do, it it would have saved time and allowed me to do that. But essentially what you do is you manipulate the car's HP so they only die in one hit. And then you get those two that previously were on the screen to follow you. And um, then what happens is you're able to... Because they move faster than X. And what you can do is you can walk alongside of them and place them, kind of like space them apart to where you can walk. And you can utilize that speed and save about up to 50 frames. So it's a little bit less than a second. And uh, yeah, overall, this was not a great intro stage. 158, very high 158. I mean, for what it's worth, it's pretty much a 159. And that's pretty slow. Normally, I would reset this, but we've been, like, at this point, when I was grinding this, we were on such good runs, I was playing super consistent, and uh, I wasn't going to let anything get away from me, so I ended up keeping it, but needless to say, I will definitely be over a second ahead, on average, next time that I go to beat this PB. So, yeah. That's the answer stage, uh, probably the most simple stage in the entire game, despite it being kind of difficult and incredibly RNG heavy. And obviously we go to Chill Penguin first, and you just kind of go along here. I'm jumping at certain points is because uh, when you walk down a slope in this game, and then all the other SNES titles, you actually gain a little bit of speed, but only when you walk, not when you dash. So what you can do is you can jump on one of those slopes, and then you can preserve that increase the speed. Uh, we can't really do it that many times. There are slopes here that we used to do back in the day, but uh, it requires like immense precision. You got to do this turnaround jump and then it doesn't really end up saving like much time at all. And a lot of the times if you do mess one up, you just lose out on everything that you could have saved. So it's best to not go for them. But now, now we have the dash and the game starts very conveniently. The most, uh, convenient part, or the most convenient level for the speedrun to start is the Chill Penguin stage, where we get the 
where we get the dash boots and we're able to pretty much go as fast as possible. In addition to this, it's kind of also interesting. Uh, bosses in this game have armor and Cho Penguin and Boomer Kawanger, which is the next one, they have low armor. Normally bosses only take two damage from a blue shot, but Boomer Kawanger and Cho Penguin take three. So what that ends up doing is allowing us to get a pretty good advantage. And, um, you know, it's not that much slower than if we were to fight Cho Penguin without, or with, with a weakness. So that was a pretty decent fight. Very RNG heavy fight. He can slide. He's invincible. Each slide takes about two seconds. Based on what he does, it's a very complicated boss fight. It requires like immense precision to like adapt to what he's doing, and then, you know, um, in addition to that, there's also things called dash shots that we utilize like all throughout this game. So whenever you dash and then you shoot, and then it ends up doing two damage instead of one, and that's a very very useful mechanic in this game. So we end up doing that. So next we go to uh, Boomer, Boomer Kawanger, and uh, it's arguably the hardest stage in the game, maybe. I don't think it is. Maybe it's because I'm accustomed to it. But, uh, okay, so here we can talk about what's going on what's what's going on here so here's what here, here's here's what happens if you go fast enough you can beat this cycle with the turtle if you're slow what ends up happening is he ends up shooting one of the things the little parachute guys and you're not able to like beat him you got to you kind of have to wait for him so being faster gets you it just rewards you so but i didn't do that but if you do it, but if you don't, there is a there is a backup. You can do this thing called uh, deboosting, where if you're on a ladder, especially this is really useful. You can hold a direction left or right, and then what that'll do is prevent the knockback that X will suffer, and he'll take the damage, but he'll he'll get like kind of hyper armor, if you will. So what we're able to do is use that damage that we wouldn't normally take, but we did here. So you gotta have, kinda have to react to it. And then you hold a left or right, and then you can de-boost, and then not lose any speed. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it um, on this turtle as well. And so yeah. You might be wondering, well wouldn't it be faster to not take damage? In this case, no. It, there is no situation we're not taking damage because there's not a way unless you're following some other route where you have like charge tornado or something but that's a that's a whole different thing but anyway this last section is really tight you have a lot of these little gap jumps where if you precisely position yourself x can fit himself it's a very narrow window he can fit himself in between these little ladders, and then you can skip the uh, the climbing animation. And of course, the ice was heart. Get it first try. Like no big thing. Didn't call me ice was heart back in the day for no reason. A lot of you guys do know what this is, but I'm gonna tell you everything about ice was heart right here. There's a lot of different setups, a lot of different ways that runners end up doing this. But what I like to do is my way that is the most consistent for me. It is not the fastest way, but it's oh, it, it allows me to be as consistent as possible. So here's how it works. You have a couple, like one or two pixels here. It's usually about right here. The, uh, this, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see my mouse. It's this one and this one. And if you land on either one of those, you're fine. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm pretty much right there. Like, I know the the little spark is blocking it, but this is obviously the right position. So then, when you do that, when you end up lining yourself with this little these pixels, you have to do this thing called an auto-turn jump, where 
that see how far away I am. X is gonna X can actually grab because the the hitbox between his his hand and the the platform are pretty generous in this game. You can, but it's not recommended because it's not consistent at all. But the auto turn, what allows you to do that is you just hit jump right here, and he'll grab the wedge and turn around rather than hitting left from this point and then doing it. It's not only you're, you're, you're using an extra input, but you're also losing leverage at that point. So right here, see that? See how far away I was? And I ended up grabbing the wedge. Now this, I believe, is a two-frame window. So you have two pixels here, two frames here. Very difficult trick. I think it's been around since 2012, something like that. And yeah, I've been doing it ever since. Then this last section is pretty sick. Little, little climb. I feel like that could have been faster. Definitely could have been faster. But. Um, so here we go. Boomer Coinger is pretty simple, just annoying. Because essentially what you can do is you can get him into this little, like, dance. And this is the best RNG possible. Because what ends up happening is that, you know, at random intervals, you can do it at the end, you can do it at the middle. They'll start teleporting, and each one of those teleports is slower. So, that was the best possible RNG. So that was really nice. Okay, so, this is the meat and potatoes of this route. This is what this route is based on. And the biggest run killer in the entire run. It's a habit. It doesn't so, do anything. This is called C3. Right. It's very fucking complicated, so I'm going to pause a lot and just talk. So, if a lot of you are familiar with the magic carpet that's also been around, it's where in Storm Eagle stage, you get the heart and then you jump and then the heart turns into the platform and you end up writing it. it saves a bunch of time. What we're going to end up doing is that same concept. It's called the phantom grab. Except we're going to replace a drop that is in the boomerang, be it uh, health or ammo. It doesn't matter wh what, what it is, as long as it's either one of them, big or small. We're going to replace that drop because of the way the phantom grab works with the heart on Chameleon's stage here. We do this because without the water, it's theoretically impossible to do. Without, I mean, you can jump all the way over there and then grab the heart but yet you, you got to get back and that's just that's again it's theoretically impossible okay so this is really important this looks weird and i'm sure some of you are still asking like why are you taking damage there the reason that we're take that we that we take this scripted damage in here see that little d boost um i held left so i didn't take the i didn't suffer the knockback so that way, what this achieves is that it, it, either I get a I get an ammo drop or I get a life drop, like a health drop. Doesn't matter. This kind of sets up an either way situation will work. Okay. So here's what we're looking for. There's a grasshopper on this top right on this top right platform. I'm going to shoot at it. What I want to happen is I want him to drop anything, except for an extra life. And I'll explain why. So here we go. This is the God RNG. This is RNG based. It kind of sucks. But once you have the drop, it's completely on you. All execution. That's what I really like about it. So here's how this works. I'm going to slow this down and then go step by step on, on, on what happens here. Okay. So I'm going to use the boomerangs and kind of juggle this drop here. What that achieves is me not picking it up, like, like grabbing it until when at the exact point that I need it okay so again we break the blocks here and this is a real this is also super hard sometimes you land in a position and you 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 miss time your jumps and then the blocks like you'll break the bottom one and then it'll skip one and then break the one on top 
your run's pretty much dead at that point because you can't fit in between. It's super difficult. Uh, lately, I've been in the middle, which is ideal because it's it's the perfect height. And um, you know, I've been nailing this every time. I'm about a 90% consistency with this whenever I do get the middle one. Okay, so then I'm going to break the blocks here and then I'm going to quickly turn around and shoot one more to delay the pickup here like this, right? And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to properly time this right here. This is exactly where you want to be. And this, as far as I know, this is pixel perfect. So you can imagine how difficult this is to line this up with not the greatest visual cues, but with enough practice, you get a feel for it. And you'll, you know, you, it, it kind of becomes muscle memory at that point. This is incredibly easy to mess up. A lot of the times you end up being like one off, one, one forward, one back. But right here, this is perfect. This is exactly where you want to be. So with all that that I just explained, this happens. That sounds funny. See? And then I got the heart. Because again, the, 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 the boomerang has funky properties. At certain points, if you have like something in the boomerang, and if you collect it on like the correct frame, it, it can do kind of all kinds of wacky shit. The, the collection, the, the thing in the boomerang can turn into whatever, you know, it can turn into doors, platforms, <clears throat> sub tanks, hearts, whatever. But in this case, it gets the heart. So now we do that and we're good. And again, I'm going to go over quickly why it's important that we take the damage here. The reason that we take the damage here is because we need the game to like we utilize the fact that the game stops at this point okay so whenever whenever we get the drop be it a life that's why we take the damage at the beginning if it's health or ammo it doesn't matter the game still stops and what this allows us to do is whenever upon collecting it we can hold right and then buffer like a frame perfect input that way it positions us on the correct position or it, on the correct uh, part of the screen and then that's what causes this whole trick to work and it's almost impossible to do with an extra life because whenever you collect an extra life the game doesn't pause but in this case it does and that's what makes it so that's much that's what that's what makes it um, a lot easier and more importantly much more feasible all right so that is chameleon third in a nutshell probably a lot to take in you guys probably fell asleep at that point but you know what your loss all right so now we can we can pretty much go in a weakness order we can follow the route of any percent which is a pretty big deal wow. So this is a uh, bomb green biker dad, otherwise known as a uh, moto papa verde. And you know that was a pretty decent fight. Uh, he he can jump around and cause a lot of time loss. It's what do you think of, you think of that? It's yeah. it's pretty annoying. But overall, this has been pretty good. We got first try uh, Grasshopper drop, and then that ended up being pretty good. Uh, you no know, tiny, tiny mistake there. Hit the wedge. But at this point, this is a pretty good run. Um, this is a really, really good run at this point. Could it be better? Absolutely. But for what I want to do at this point, my goal was to get a, a personal best before rebirth drops and yeah, very possible by the time you're watching this rebirth is already out but you know um rebirth will be out today's the 16th and it comes out the 29th so one week in a day or one week in six days no you get the one up because you need it for the revisits since you uh, you end up dying three times getting the Hadoken 
But he, yeah, no, the uh, no the the, the one up the, the one up there is really nice because it doesn't cost you any time at all. There is zero zero time lost. Ten eighteen. Yeah, ten eight. So ten eighteen chameleon port, where you uh, get up there and port out of the stage. This is a super good time. Like really, really good. Okay. Now, for the big one. This is why this route is really hard because you also you have to do the chameleon third uh, grab, and then you have to also do this. Like, right after, and it just, it crushes your fucking soul. Okay, again, this, this is much easier. Th this is a whole lot easier, because there's like four pixels or something like that. And you, um, the, the way, the way that you end up aligning yourself. Let me go back here, show you how you, you, you end up aligning yourself here. So, this right here, this... On the, t on the top left here, if you guys can't see where my mouse is, this is what I'm looking for. This is second pixel. And then if you, you can go over one more pixel, and then that'll still be good, but any more after that, it won't work. You have two more pixels to the left that you can use, but yeah, it's about a four pixel thing. Still pretty difficult to line up. I mean, you know, you don't have a whole lot of time, but... Once you do that, here's what happens. You have to do a neutral dash jump. Because again, you have to hold right whenever you collect it. The game pauses conveniently. So you can hold right at this point. And the issue is, is that if you don't do a neutral dash jump and you do a dash jump, you'll move forward and then that'll fuck it all up and then your run dies. So at this point, neutral dash jump. And again, hold right. And then that will create a platform that we can now ride all the way. Like, mostly, just pretty much just the stage becomes trivial at this point. And this saves about 16 to 17 seconds overall. A lot of time. A lot of time gained here. And then we, we grab the sub tank and it still stays with us. See, th this just skips skips a whole lot of platforming and a whole lot of, like, things that, like, would otherwise stop your stop your movement well, and all that. Happened, yeah, so at this point, if you're on good pace, you get C3, you get carpet, no this run can't pee it's, pee. it's go time. It, it's, it's fucking go time. Um, we do have to deal with Eagle, though. But again, with Sea Sting, Eagle is not that big right. of a deal. And, Purple in addition to that, in the chat, chat. Um, Eagle is more likely, from my experience, to give you no dives versus dives. Because you kill them so fast. Because we're, we're you know, on old route we were doing two shot, two shot, two shot. But this, but this time we get three shot, three shot. Shot. We're just doing tons and tons and tons of damage here. And then with the old route, you could hit him up in the air. See how quickly he's just, he's just dead. Take those. Like, immediately. So fast. And then, okay, this is the, the also, also the huge benefit gonna be is that old route with the worst RNG, Eagle could lose you like 13 to 14 seconds. This route, the most time that you can lose is about five. So, yeah. And again, it's it's much less likely to even happen because you just kill him so quick. Okay. So, again, it's go time after this. I am 10 seconds ahead at this point. I'm I'm feeling good. You know, I'm chilling. Uh, this is interesting. So this is gonna, and th this is a top route mandrel. So the, there's conveyors or mandrel mammoth. There's there's conveyors in mammoth stage, and, and and check this out. So both of these conveyors go right, so we can utilize the speed boost. And then this is really cool because we kill the head or the or the body part doesn't matter. 
And then check out this little boost that we can get. We can get this dash. A little bit. Saves like 10 frames. Good stuff. Speedrunning is cool, man. Um, I could have broken the box a little bit better there. But I was, uh, it's crunch time, so it's hard, hard to be perfect at this point. I'm not <sighs> no, it makes me more nervous. Damn it, dude. Yeah, the, the little bonk there, instead of uh, going straight down, loses a little bit of time. This, this was not a, this was not a good level. The, the nice thing about this level, and a couple other levels too, is that, the, I mean, Mammoth in general, just the, this entire thing, it's like 99% RNG, RNG free. So it's pretty cool. And then we get that, we do uh, that little, that cool little boomerang trick, we force the boomerang to go down, and uh, you know, instead of like going under the platforms and then going back, you know. It's just way faster to get the heart tank, the boomerang that way. So that was pretty cool. And then we utilize sea sting. And that's another thing about this route too, is that uh, sea sting allows us to just make a whole lot of points in the stage. Pretty trivial. Um, another place that it saves a lot of time is octopus because the subs are weak to sea sting. And then we can just boom, bam, 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 bam. And then we're invincible too, so we're just hammering on these subs. And uh, next stage, oh, this is probably my best stage right here in this entire level. I did this, I did this perfectly. This was this mandrel stage is like the cleanest I've ever done it. It's so good. Yeah, my chat really doesn't work, so I don't know why. I'm pretty careful. Okay. So this ends up being like insanely good. Like this this is I mean it's pretty self-explanatory. And again, we can use Sea Sting and then just bypass all this stuff. And then the Thunder Slimer can throw down bubbles at you and cause a ton of lag. Very fortunately for me, he did not do any of that, so that was very nice. Fucking dude. And then this is called Paul Heart, where... If it's it's fairly precise, instead of going all the way over to the right wall, if you throw a boomerang at the right time, you can force the boomerang up and then it'll grab it. And yeah, okay, that, that was, was just perfect. yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. And I think I think I think doing I think doing a mandrel stage oh like when you're God. on this this type of pace, wow, is fucking impressive. So a lot of people ask this, why do you why do you keep why do you keep running into Mandrill? So before Mandrill was not a problem, but he could punch at you and then that would cause uh, time loss. But there is a strat there's a the, the D boost strat allows you to just, you know, stay on him. And then if he punches, you can just react to it. And then you'll have iframes and then you can just chase after him if he does end up punching. So mostly like, this fight doesn't, it just completely cuts out any kind of bad RNG that can happen, so it's really nice. So if you see this, like, I have iframes here. If you were to punch, I could chase after him and still hit him. You know? So yeah, it just ends up being the best, was, best possible way to do it. <laughs> that was good, man. It was, and it and it was.
That was good, man. Yeah, I mean, this is a really, really good run at this point. Very good run. So there is a phantom grab that you can do here. It's incredibly inconsistent. You can grab the sub tank uh, behind that little uh, crusher dude. Overall, it saves about three and a half seconds. Um, I usually don't go for it unless the run is like on life support, just because of how inconsistent. Because the the time you know, you have to you have to invest a little bit of time into it. It's about a second and a half. And since we do the revisits, you can actually go for it twice, and. Uh, if you miss it both times, it's about three seconds lost versus not going for it and preserving. You don't have to like, you don't have to invest time into it for, for no payout. So that's what I've been doing lately and it's just, it's um, it's been pretty good for me. So again, um, this is really important here. So if you see on the top right, you see on the if you see on the top right of of the screen before I go into the door, we're going to point this out. Very 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 important for this. I it's so hard to fucking pinpoint. Uh, okay. So this is what you want to see. This little top right part. And if you don't because for whatever reason Capcom thought it would be funny to like make this Easter egg be incredibly, I don't, I don't know, incredibly something. So <laughs> you, for, for, for those of you who are new to watching this and don't know how to get this, you have to see in a single playthrough without resetting anyway, like in a single setting, you have to see like this spot, like the health, the, the, the section behind it and everything like that. A grand total of five times on a single playthrough. And on the very final one, if you have all bosses you've completed, all armor pieces, all sub tanks, all health upgrades, like 100%, you will get the head token. Dude, what is this? And I get the god, I, I get, I get the god RNG here. Armadillo is a problem i have seen this guy roll around for literally 25 seconds before i'm not shitting you but here we get the here we get the god rng so that's like super good but i have seen this guy roll around for ever and it's just there's nothing you can do because you can't damage him until like he he gets out of his roll oh or God. you can't remove you can't remove his armor anyway so yeah, this is like super good. I do a uh, I, I do a cool trick shot here. Oh, I don't do that. You can shoot a shot in the wall, and then uh, the next one will oh hit him frame God. perfectly. Oh, I, I I don't know why I didn't go for it, but whatever. It's, it, it does it. It doesn't necessarily save time, but it can. This run is insane. Yeah, ten and a half seconds ahead. Pretty good. Now the next stage is pretty hard as well, but again, I've been, I've, I've, I've just been on fire. I've been, I have been on fire like this week grinding. So there is a, there, there's kind of a, there's kind of a small strat here where you can prevent like any kind of like movement loss. You switch to spark and then immediately switch to Tornado. And then what that allows you to do is go through this entire first section without stopping at all. But I kind of mess it up here. Do Spark, and then immediately switch to Tornado. Yeah, I didn't I didn't shoot it uh, early enough. But it's not that big of a deal. It, it's like 0. 0.6 seconds, 0. 0.7. So it's not too bad. No, you just... If stuff like that happens, you know, you gotta, you just gotta recover. You just gotta, you gotta get back in the game, man. Get your head on straight. Uh, that was a scripted mistake. Um, so, another reason why C-Sting, having C-Sting in, in Octo Stage is, like, really important. So we time it, 
to where the we, we don't want to release the the invo like the charge like right before the fight we want to release it at a point that's kind of conveniently going to run out so that way we can have time to charge another one for the second sub so i'm going to release it like right here so uh, so we can just bypass and then this is what i was saying earlier like we can just like we're invincible and just just done tons of damage and again right here yeah and it's just yeah it's just great okay so then we also utilize that same technique because what we want to do is equip tornado now this is a pretty difficult strat but it's so consistent and always works i'm going to do one kick shoot a tornado and then go towards the sub the old strat like the old school stuff you could argue that it's technically faster to do that but um there's a lot of shit on the screen it causes a lot of lag there's torpedoes whatever this right here is really tight like you gotta you, you gotta you gotta position this thing like super precise because um like look where this thing dies it's like right there that's when it dies so then, see that? That's always good. And then this, that's a really scary strat too, because you see, and, I'm, and as I come back here, I'm really close to this. I'm really close to the spikes. Look at this. <sighs> Just a couple pixels to the right, and I was I was cooked, you know. But I mean, that's that's, that's what it is. So I cut that one, chat. <laughs> yeah. But the reason that we do that, like you could you could make it safer, but it wouldn't be as fast because we're doing more dash jumps, and the more buttons you're pressing, the more inputs you're doing, the 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 slower it is because X has to land, you have to react to him landing, and then you got to hit dash jump again. So we're minimizing. The amount of dash jumps that we're doing i don't know i wouldn't say it's risky because i i've only messed it up like once in a run so so then that's the uh that's the quick kill you just charge a tornado and it kills him before he even uh, goes up there okay one more like massive uh potential run killer octopus this guy can suck and he sucks once loses three seconds and again, this guy can... Yeah, see? Right there. Oh, I thought I got, I th I thought I got none. Okay. Yeah, okay, so, so one suck isn't bad. Especially, Bruh, this run especially on this pace. So we're going to lose like three seconds here. And it's not, that's not too bad. But yeah, again, this is like the best pace I've ever been on. Oh my god. Wow. This run. So, we have to do one revisit. We have to go back to the chill penguin to get the heart. Because as far as we know at the moment... At the moment... There is no way to do a one trip penguin and what i mean by that is get the mech on top where you can get the heart on the very first visit so you don't have to do this if somebody just saying if somebody out there watching this video is you know wants to somehow find out how to do that just saying it save us 50 seconds Eight, eight, eight. What if I select? <laughs> I'll figure it out tonight. Okay. Oh, I have to piss. That means that this run is this is the run. It actually does though. Back in the day, I always used to PB on runs that I and I had to piss. So again, um. 
yeah th this this is a bunch of like i'm probably going to skip this because whenever i show you I, i've already explained how to get the head token and it's just the same old crap like over and over again i can show you what can happen there was a run i mean i wasn't this <laughs> Was what the hell was that? Okay, so what can happen is, so again, if you miss, if you miss a visit, your run dies, because you probably don't have an extra life to go through there, and then in addition to that, you also lose like thirty seconds, and you can't, you just can't, you can't recover. Um, what can happen is you jump too early, and then you, because you have to hold right to get the speed boost, and then you hold left to. Uh, Make sure that you dodge this little wedge so you fall straight down. And again, this is where chat's like, Keck W, he died, he's fucking stupid, he doesn't know what he's doing. When in reality, like, this is a pretty tough, this is a really hard part of the run, because it's very easy to mess up. But yeah, that can happen, and if you think I'm bullshitting you, well, I'm, okay, here we go. So you do that, like I said before, you know, we're talking about how to do it. Get the Hadouken, he's dressed as Ryu and all that. And, uh, yeah, the Doken's pretty, pretty good. Pretty strong. Yeah, 2532. Solid. Solid Hado. My best Hado time ever. Yep. Hands down, for sure. Holy fucking shit, dude. Where, how did I pull this out of my ass, dude? I don't know. Somebody said in chat whenever I said that, he, he, he was like, wait. It was in your ass the whole time? Okay, this is called Leap of Faith. And this kind of looks funny at the beginning. We're taking a bunch of damage. We're actually doing this on purpose. Because it's another it's another vile fight. Where um the min the minimum the, the maximum HP that you can have needs to be six. And then what that does... Very good. Okay, well, I, I can explain this, too. Okay. This is called uh, Floor's Lava. So this is a sequence break that is, that's that been around for, I don't know, well over a decade. Decade, like, in a, a year or something. So normally if you land or if you stand on this little platform, the vile cutscene ends up happening. And, you know, chasing after Zero chases after him, blah, blah, blah. But if you... If you can skip it by quickly bypassing the game's flag and then going over the door, and then that cutscene is happening, like in this room. And before no quick skip. And then, and then, also, another thing. Yep. Go figure. This all happens in the same room, so it's so it's it is technically a sequence break, but it's a very small one. Fucking vile, man. It is technically a sequence break. It's super annoying, but... And if you don't know what the Hadouken does, this is what it does. Oh, no. oh yeah! This is the... Oh yeah! I forgot! I choked it. That could have been that run over. Horribly. Oh yeah, I forgot. That happened. I choked it. So to do the head token, you still need to do the QCF motion, the uh, the uh, the two one four. You know, QC, uh, so it's easy to do. It's easy to mess up on a SNES pad. And if you do it too quickly, no port, no port. No port. two three six. Sorry. You said two three six. You said two one four, which means okay, you're. We're probably going yeah. To be like minus Time to get chastised. Five. I'm gonna say. Oh, it's more than. Oh, it's more than one second, dude. I'm actually surprised there because I thought it was gonna lose a lot more, but I didn't. And this is a really cringe pattern. That was the only thing that could have made that worse is if 
Uh, both spider wet, wet out this spiders. Is really trying, man. This game is trying really hard. And so with the Hedoken, what you have to do in order to use it is be at full health. If you are not at full health, it won't work. So you can imagine like the pressure of getting hit is pretty horrible. But it's fairly easy. But again, when you're on this type of pace, anything can happen. So yeah, I mean, we're just kind of storming the Sigma stages with uh, Hadoken. This is my favorite stage in the entire game to do. Because it's, it's pure execution. Zero RNG whatsoever. And then you can do these little gap jumps, which I like doing. Oh yeah. Oof. Oof. Crispy. Yeah, that was nice. So you do three dashes here? Yeah, it's just... Bro, I can't yes, do Sigma that. 2 is uh, sick. That, that Sigma 1 was... Heck. Indeed it was. So this is a fairly new discovery. Saves about 20 frames, which is one third of a second, roughly. This bat at the top actually causes like a fair amount of lag but if you end up killing them without losing time it'll go so smooth so you have to the only way the, the only way that you can save time with it though is that if you make sure that you don't have to do any extra jumps or anything because if you do that it doesn't end up saving time but check this out so that will that little quick turnaround shot and then i do a double kick and i can bypass the wedge and then go go about it See, there's like, there's like no lag there. That was a really, that was very, very good Sigma 2. Okay, here we go. All right, Rangda Bangda. Arguably the most RNG heavy fight in the entire run. 400% anyway. There are three different colors of eyes that Rangda Bangda can do. Blue, green, and red. Green sucks. The reason it sucks is because it, it stays open the, the least amount of time. Blue is the best because it usually comes towards you. And what does that mean? We can head doken it. It takes four shots to end up killing one eye. Red is good, but it can it, it also is only it's a chance to come down at you. It doesn't always do that, but it can. So gr green eye on the left isn't terrible because you can get you can get um, two shots guaranteed. You gotta be fast though. Green eye on the right though is fucking horrible because um, unless you're like a Tass, you can only you can only get one shot here. That's really bad. See, like the the window to hit the green eye on the right side is like so small, and it's just awful. So the best possible pattern is if you get a blue eye on the left. It ends up coming down, and then you get a right eye, or get a red eye on the on the right, and that ends up coming down. You just double head doken, and, and you just four shot the nose, and he dies like super fast. That's like fucking big dick RNG. But here, I'm not gonna say I got the worst RNG because I didn't, but it's definitely it's definitely not good. And then you have to make sure to four shot this nose because if you don't four shot the nose, oh, the time loss is nutty. Okay. Okay. So I I think I played pretty well there for for what I was given. Well, I did I did what I could. Okay. Yeah, pretty significant okay. amount of time lost here. Okay, Sigma three. Two pretty big tricks on this level and. One tiny little error is so much time lost. So I'm going to go over the very first one. Now, this is called the armadillo skip. You have to be quick. So you, you end up coming out with fire. You kill this turtle. So the reason this works 
is because we're go I'm going to precisely place an ice sled, okay? And then the ice sled is really convenient because what this does, the why armadillo spawns, and this is the only reason that works, why armadillo spawns is because the camera shifts upward whenever you walk or go into the next room and that is that causes armadillo to spawn however if you let this ice sled push you it basically is just like a a one frame transition like boom it's instant and it doesn't give the game time to recognize that you've entered the door the only thing you have to do at this point is then when when you execute it you cannot jump until you get to a certain point like past because jumping will cause the camera to spawn upwards or to, to pan upwards and that will spawn armadillo. So watch this. Boom. See how that see this see this little black space here at the bottom? It kinda looks weird because it's not supposed to be there. That's the game like failing to pan upward. So again, Armadillo's fight just completely gets skipped. So here and right after this, we also have to do another really fucking hard thing. We have to charge a flame to get rid of the dudes. And then I'm going to do the air head token. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, so we have to do we have to do another really tough we have to do a really uh, another really tough tough trick. It's called the air hadoken on chameleon. So again, there's a couple different ways that this can go terribly. But as long as you're fast, you're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump, place the ice sled in the wall. That way I'm like in the air and I'm and I'm and I'm grounded according to the game. And I'm going to I'm going to buffer a QCF motion. Okay. That way that's that way it's stored. Like whenever I pause the game. To switch over to my buster because that's the only way that I can get to my buster at this point with the ice sweat being out. I'm going to quickly swap and then I'm going to buffer a shot. That way the head doken comes out and yes! boom. Yes, 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 yes. And boom. And once you get those two tricks, you're kind of chilling for a little bit. Okay, we got one more fucking hard trick, chat. Dom Dukin. We got one more hard trick. Until Dom Dukin, you're 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 chilling for a little bit. Cause this is this the rest of the stage is pretty easy. Let's fucking go, dude. Just come on, <laughs> come on dude. Time to lock in. You know what I'm saying? Time to lock in. You can head Doken immediately on Mandrill, but it's a YOLO strat and it's just a bad idea. So yeah, I mean, I haven't really been grinding this game that long, like ever since I came back. This is probably like the second week. So getting to this point, pretty fast. Okay, so this trick, this next trick is called Dom Dukin. Back then, we didn't really have I mean the best way for us anyway was to let the top part of D-Rex's mouth like just go up and then sometimes it could go down diagonally or it could just go straight over and then we would have to time the head token when it would come down it's not that difficult but I think back in 2014 this strat was discovered you dash up to him and then you you buffer the QCF you jump and then you precisely like let go of jump and then you shoot and then that'll just kill him outright like this yes!
go, man. Okay. So this is this is I mean if you're on pace you're very favored to PV. Is this this first head token? No, YouTube is part of this too. Just head token this guy. It comes at you do he comes at you guns blazing, but you got the tech. No claw. So there's like one last fuckery that can happen. And this this claw, by the way, you can't you can't head token. There's a whole lot of people that ask me, bro, why don't you just head token the fucking final bus? Do I did it when I was fire? It's like, okay. You didn't and you can't. So, before you ask me that, don't. You can't do it. You can do it in Maverick Hunter X, but this isn't that. But what can happen here is the claws can block you and then not allow you to ascend up immediately. It's not a whole lot of time lost, but it is fucking annoying and it does waste time. And that's what we're praying for. Almost dead. Almost. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's great. Again, it's it was like six years or something. Yeah, this is a, it's a, it's a pretty big PB. It's a very big PB. I mean, I, I could certainly go for 34, and I think that's the lowest that I would push this. Yeah, I I would I I, I would I would go for 34. It was there's some cool aftermath and all that, but was was pretty sick, chat. No, the route that I'm doing is the best route. There's a couple like strats that I could learn. That would make the run very shitty and not fun for me. That would probably save about three seconds in total. I don't care to do them because that's uh, very bad. There's this carpet in, in Sigma 1 called OptiFly and it saves two seconds. I don't think it's like super bad. I haven't tried it myself. It's not, it's not like the worst strat. Before I was like... Yeah, I'll never do C3, dude. C3 is cancer. It's like, okay, it's, it's the opposite. Eagle third is cancer. I could get, I could get 34. Um, whether or not I'm gonna like start grinding for that now, I definitely, dude, I, I, I'll need, I'll need some time to get 34 for sure. I'd be very surprised if I were to be able to get that prior to rebirth. But again, um, definitely uh, hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you are also new. So all that stuff will be on there.